Good day, everyone. So for today's topic, we are going to discuss about review of the musculoskeletal system. For the overview, the musculoskeletal system includes different parts such as your bones, joints, muscles, tendons, ligaments, and bursae of the body. The musculoskeletal system, the general functions include it provides protection for vital organs including the brain, heart, and lungs, provide a sturdy framework to support body structures, and makes mobility possible. So, seeing this uh, different uh, functions or roles that the musculoskeletal does to our body, you can conclude that it is very important in terms of our mobility, in terms of our posture, and in terms of protecting the internal organs that we have in our body. So for let us discuss now the structure and function of the musculoskeletal system. So this is like um, since the, the topic is about the review of the musculoskeletal system, I believe that you have already discussed this um, this topic under the medical surgical nursing and under your anatomy and physiology. That's why um, it is labeled as only review of the musculoskeletal system. So I will just be reviewing and I'll just be running uh, through the different concepts that you had way back then. So let's have the structure and function of the skeletal system. So first, bones. So in general, so these are the functions of our bones. So bones are support, protection of internal organs, voluntary movement, blood cell production, and mineral storage. So all these are performed by our bones. So we are talking about bones muna in, in, this, um, in this slide. So you can see the different um, explanation of these functions in the succeeding slide. So kindly read thoroughly na lang, uh, when it comes to this function. And then bones are constructed of we have two main um, like composition or types of bones. You have cancellous, also known as trabecular or spongy. And its characteristic, it lacks the organized structure of a cortical bone. While cortical, also known as compact, it is cylindrical or cylindric structural units called osteons that fit closely together, creating a dense bone structure. So... If you will be looking at uh, on the next slide here, so makikita natin that really compact bone is really dense. Okay, for example, this is our a, a long bone. Okay, so we get this um, small part here, and then zoom natin, and this is how our, a compact bone uh, looks like. So very dense, sha. Very like very uh, um, made up of collagen, tal collagen talaga, very compact, kaya tinawag na compact bone. While on the other hand, for the spongy bone, kung makikita nyo, parang may spaces siya, right? Kaya nga tinawag din siyang trabecula or um, spongy. Parang it looks spongy. And all, it also contains uh, red marrow for, for each, like um, yung trabecula, trabecula na yan. Okay, so that is the difference between a compact bone. They are more uh, definitely, um, in terms of strength, mas matibay si compact in comparison to the spongy bone. Okay, and then in this picture, another um, figure showing the osteon. Ito yung osteon na tinatawag. Um, for the compact bone, later on, mas makikilala natin what is an osteon. Okay, this is osteon and trabeculae of the spongy bones. Ito yung mga, yung parang pores na yan na nakikita nyo. So, that's the trabeculae of spongy bone. So, osteon is for the compact bone, trabeculae for the spongy bone. And then, another picture here, pag um, inangat lang natin itong isang bundle na to or fiber, Osteon ang tawag natin. And then we have different parts of this osteon, which later 
um, we will be discussing. Okay, so another picture, ito, like, um, para mas ma-visualize nyo talaga, so this is the cancellous bone or the, or the spongy or the trabeculate bone. Ayan, yung makikita natin maraming parang pores na yan, di ba? So that is your um, cancellous or spongy. While itong nasa side na to, and this one on the other side, this is the cortical or the compact bone. Kita natin, di ba? Talagang compact siya and very dense. Okay. So next, um, we all know that there are 200, 206 bones in the human body divided into four categories. So this division is based on the types of bones according, I mean, these are the types of bones according to shape. So you have long bones, for example, your femur, your humerus, and your tibia. And for your short bones, you have your carpals and tarsals. Flat bones examples are sternum, ribs, skull, and scapula, and regular bones, vertebra, mandible, ear ossicles, and sacrum. So these are the types of bones according to shape. So again, for adult, we have 206 bones. So for babies, um, they have like 300 bones. So nagfuse together yung bones ng babies as they grow up until ma-reach nila yung kagaya na sa atin, I mean sa adult, na 206 bones. Okay, so this is the figure of the four types of bone according to shape. So you have the long bone here. This is the uh, humerus of the arm. So ito siya. So pag zoom natin, ayan, long bone siya because it's lengthy. Then this one, if we zoom this, ayan siya. And then another zoom. So this is the short bone which is a carpal of our wrist. Next here, in our sternum, so pag zoom, ito siya. So this is a flat bone. And then here, another one. This is, pag zoom natin, at the back, you have the irregular bone, which is our vertebra. So these are the types of bones according to shapes. Next, um, let's uh, dive deeper somehow sa different types of bones. So let's start with long bones. So they are shaped like rods or shafts with rounded ends. So we have different parts of the long bones. The shaft is known as the diaphysis and then primarily, primarily cortical bone siya. Kaya matiba yung shaft, yung diaphysis ng long bones. While the end of long bones are called epiphysis and primarily cancellous or spongy bone. So the epiphyseal plate separates the epiphysis from the diaphysis and is, it is the center for longitudinal growth in children. And in the adult, um, it is calcified. So para makita nyo, here is the example. So again, this is a long bone. The different parts that I'm talking about is, first you have the diaphysis. In diaphysis from this length up to this one, yung parang git, gitna, the lengthy part at the middle of this long bone is what we call the diaphysis. And again, this is made up of cortical, or I mean compact bone. Okay? And then, um, next you have here the epiphysis. At the end of the long bone, yung shaft, kung tawagin, we call that as epiphysis. So for the epiphysis, um, ayan, you have two ends kasi. And then, yung makikita niya na to, na line na yan, we call this as the epiphyseal line. So according to our reference, di ba, sa bata daw, this, this bone is a room for, for like um, getting taller para tumangkad ang isang bata. So ayan yung epiphyseal line. So as we, as a, yung mga bata is growing, growing, I mean, tumataas, tumatangkad. So ayan yung um, point of um, lengthening ng ating bone, the space. And then as we go old, nagka-calcify na siya. Okay? So hindi ka na, hindi natatangkad kapag calcified na si epiphyseal line. Okay, next short bones, it is consists of cancellous bone covered by a layer of compact bone. Okay, so short bone, so spongy 
and then covered by a contact bone. Next, flat bones are important sites for hematopoiesis and frequently provide vital organ protection. So, ibig sabihin, si flat bones, they are important for um, the production of the bone, I mean, uh, blood cells ng ating katawan. So, they are made up of gansilous bone layer between compact bones. So, parang kay short bones lang din. And then, irregular bones, they have unique shapes related to their functions. So, generally, regular bone structure is similar to that of flat bones. So, for protection then and somehow site for, I, I mean, see, regular bone is also made up of cancellous bone layer between compact bones. So, parang si flat bones lang din. Okay? So, irregular bones kasi irregular yung kanyang shape. Flat bones kasi flat yung kanyang shape. Short bones kasi short lang yung mga bones na to. Okay? Just like what we have discussed earlier. Okay, so another. So, bones is composed of cells, protein matrix, and mineral deposits. So, we have um, three types of cells. Three basic types of cell ng ating bones. Okay, so you have osteoblast. Sandaan pag sanabing osteoblast, the function, um, it functions in bone formation by secreting bone matrix. So osteoblast bone formation. Osteocytes, these are mature bone cells that involve in bone maintenance function. And they are lo located in the lacunae. Okay, so osteocytes, they are like the matured bone cells in our body. And then the other type of cell is the osteoclast. They are located in shallow um, houseships, lacunae, and are multinuclear cells involved in destroying, resorbing, and remolding bone. So kung si osteoblast, siya yung taga fo bone formation, yung taga gawa ng bone, ang taga sira naman is si osteoclast. Okay? And then osteocyte, ito yung mga mature na bone cell. Na eventually, kapag kakailangan ng sirain, osteoclast will 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 do the that function, the resorption, I mean the destruction or the resorption and remodeling of the bone. So that is the function of the osteoclast. So please remember this, um, three basic types of your bone cells. So eto lang siya, just for. A visualization. So, osteogenic cell, this is the stem cell of the bones or of a bone. And then, osteoblast first. Ayan, nasa outside layer siya, no? si osteoblast. And then, at the middle, you have here the osteocyte. Ito yung mga mature bone cells natin. And then, ito yung sa gitna. Ito yung mga sinisira na na bones. Kaya, I mean, the, the cells that we have here, we call them as osteoclasts. Siya na rin yung nag-remodel and nag, uh, perform ng bone resorption if needed. Okay, so the microscopic, punta tayo sa microscopic um, structure of the bones. So the microscopic functioning unit of a mature cortical bone is the ostion or the hervision system. Okay, so the center of the ostion is the hervision canal and um, around, um, inside the revision system, we also have lamellae and then we also have lacunae containing osteocytes. And then they are nourished uh, through tiny structures called canaliculi. So for us to visualize that, so ito siya, revision system. So for example, this is our, uh, our bone. So iangat natin yung isa, yung isang part ng ating cortical bone, okay? And then, here, ang tawag natin dito is the hervision system. In the hervision system, we have different parts. You have the lamellae or lamella. And then, for the lamella, you have the lacuna and you have the osteocyte and then you have the canaliculi. So, these are the different parts of the cortical um, bone, the hervision system in tawag natin. Okay? And then, 
So lacunae in cancellous bone are layered in an irregular lattice network. Ito yung trabeculae kung tawagin natin. So red bone marrow fills the lattice network. So sa spongy bone yung kaninang pinakita ko, diba? nakita niya yung parang pores na yun. So that, ayan, ito dito sa ating image. So yung pores na yan, again, we call that as your trabeculae, ba? Diba? And then meron dyang uh, mga red bone marrow that fills that lattice network. Covering the bone is a dense fibrous membrane known as the periosteum. So, si periosteum, ito na siya. Yung pinaka-outer layer that covers this whole bone, we call that as periosteum. So, ito siya. Periosteum. The, the one that covers this, um, this bone. So, dyan natin makikita si osteo blast. Okay? So, that layer, si periosteum, periosteum that is closest to the bone contains osteoblasts which are bone forming cells. So, nakita natin kanina. Okay? And then, um, si endosteum naman is a thin vascular membrane that covers the marrow cavity of long bones and the spaces in cancellous bone. So, si osteoclast, ito yung taga resorb, taga I mean, resorption, um, remote, re remolding, and uh, destruction or destroying bone cells. Siya yung gumagawa si osteoclast. So, they are located near the endosteum in the how ships or how ships um, lacunae. So, ito. Ito yung picture ng endosteum. So, kung kanina... Ito si periosteum natin. Again, yung pinaka-outer layer nitong long bone is the periosteum. And you have here si osteoblast, di ba? Yung pinaka-inner layer naman yan. Okay? Yung nakay, tab, nasa tabi ni um, um, spongy, that is endosteum. Okay? And then, nandyan malapit si ating osteoclast. Okay. So, next bone marrow, it is a vascular tissue located in the shaft cavity of long bones and in flat bones. So, you have two types of marrow. So, red bone marrow, primarily um, located sa sternum, sa ilium, vertebra, and ribs in adults. Responsible siya for producing red and white blood cell. So, this is a function of the red bone marrow. Produce um, red and white blood cells. In adults, that long bone is filled with fatty yellow marrow. So, napapalitan siya kapag ka adult na tayo. Nagiging fatty uh, yellow marrow na siya. Okay? So, that is the bone marrow. So, ito. This one is an adult kasi yellow marrow na siya. Okay? Pero, in, in some cases, okay, so, Here, we have also um, the, the, the shaft of the long bone. Itong sa trabeculae natin, we have red marrow here. Okay, we still have red, bone ma red marrow here in the spongy part of the bone or in the trabeculae. Pero dito sa pinaka gitna, we have the yellow marrow which is uh, a fatty, fatty na nga siya, fatty yellow marrow. So, bone tissue is well vascularized. Alam natin yan that maganda ang flow of the um, blood and the blood supply in our bones. So, cancerous bone receives a rich blood supply through metaphysial and epiphyseal vessels. Periosteal vessels carry blood to compact bones through the minute Volkmann's canals. So, dyan dumadaan yung ating mga blood vessels sa Volkmann's canals. So, in addition, nutrient arteries penetrate the periosteum and enter the medullary cavity through foramina or small openings. So, nutrient arteries supply blood to the marrow and bone. So, rich yung blood supply ng ating marrow and ng ating bones. Okay, now for bone formation, these are terms, no? Osteogenesis, that is bone formation. It begins long before birth. 
And ossification is another ter term. This is the process by which the bone matrix is formed and hardening minerals such as calcium salts are deposited on the collagen fibers. So yung pag-harden ng minerals um, and um, pag-deposit or and pag deposit on the collagen fibers we call that ossification pero yung bone formation we call that osteogenesis that is the process okay sige next so let's talk about bone maintenance so bone is a dynamic tissue in constant state of turnover resorption and formation so we have different regulating factors that controls this um, bone resorption and formation. So you have local stress, vitamin D, PTH, or the parathyroid hormone calcitonin in blood supply. So let's talk about first local stress. So local stress through weight bearing, it acts to stimulate bone formation and remodeling. So as we, as we move, as we um, bear our own weight, so na-stimulate yung ating, yung bone formation sa ating katawan and remodeling. Kaya mahalaga yung paggalaw-galaw natin, yung movements ng ating katawan. So yung mga weight-bearing bones natin in lower leg, for example, your tibia and your fibula, they are thick and strong. Without weight-bearing or stress, kung hindi tayo gumagalaw-galaw, as in, for example, prolonged bed rest, nakahiga lang, okay, um, limited yung movement, so the bone loses calcium, which causes resorption, or which is because of resorption and becomes osteopenic and weak. So the weak bone may fracture easily. So kapag ka hindi tayo um, pagles yung ating movements because of, for example, bed rest or a problem, uh, medically, medical condition, so nagiging osteopenic tayo or nagiging marupok yung ating mga bones. Okay? And they fracture easily. So that is the, 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 the role of stress or yung weight bearing na ginagawa ng movements natin. Okay? Next, vitamin D, also known as calcitrol. It functions to increase the amount of calcium in the blood by promoting absorption of calcium from the GIT. So, si vitamin D, pinapataas niya yung calcium in our blood by absorbing more um, calcium in our GIT. So, it facilitates the mineralization of osteoid tissue. So, kung gusto natin mapataas yung ating calcium in our body, we take also vitamin D supplements or calcium. Calcitriol. Calcitriol. Next, parathyroid hormone and calcitonin, they are also major regulators of calcium homeostasis. Actually, parang they are um, contradicting itong dalawang to. So, si, pa, si PTH or parathyroid hormone, it regulates the calcium in the blood by promoting movement of calcium from the bone into the bloodstream. Again, Ito yung movement of calcium mula sa bone going to the bloodstream. So in response to low calcium levels in the blood, increased levels of parathyroid hormone prompts the mobilization of calcium. So meaning, the purpose of parathyroid hormone is to increase calcium in our blood. So kapag ma mababa yung level of calcium in our blood, so si parathyroid hormone will be released to to somehow mapataas yung level of calcium in the blood. Okay, so kukunin niya yung mga calcium from the bone going to the blood. Next, calcitonin on the other hand, it is secreted by thyroid gland in response to elevated blood calcium levels. So kung mataas naman yung ating blood calcium in the blood, si calcitonin will be released in the thyroid hormone and inhibits bone resorption and increases the, de the deposit of calcium in the bone. So, para mapababa yung calcium in the blood, dadalhin ngayon ni calcit um, calcitonin will be released, and then eventually si calcium will be 
deposited in our bones. So, opposite yung function ni parathyroid hormone and si calcitonin. Okay, so they are regulators of calcium. Okay, next you have excessive thyroid hormone production such as in Graves disease can result in increased bone resorption and decreased bone formation. So remember this, you know, increased uh, levels of cortisol have these same effects. So, for example, patients receiving long-term synthetic cortisol or corticosteroids kapag sila ay nagagamot, long-term nilang tinitake tong cortisol or corticosteroids. So, they are, an, an example of corticosteroid is prednisone. So, they are at increased risk of steroid-induced osteopenia, kung tawagin natin. And when we say osteopenia, this is the loss of bone density that may result in fracture. Okay? Madaling ma-fracture yung mga um, nagka-therapy long-term ng corticosteroid or cortisol. So, remember that. Next, growth hormone naman, it has direct and indirect effects on skeletal growth and remodeling. So, si growth hormone, um, it produces um, insulin-like growth factor 1, which accelerates bone modeling in children and adolescents. So, somehow, um, it stimulates the liver and then produces an insulin IGF-1, kung tawagin, which uh, accelerates, pinapabilis niya yung bone modeling para sa mga bata. Okay, so that's for the growth hormone. So, growth hormone also directly stimulates skeletal growth in children and adolescents. So, kaya somehow, di ba, meron tayong nakikita ng products na pinapainom ng growth hormone because somehow it stimulates the skeletal growth in children and adolescents. Okay, so sex hormones naman such as estrogen and testosterone. So, estrogen, it stimulates osteoblasts and inhibits osteoclasts. So, therefore, si estrogen, uh, bone formation is enhanced and resorption is inhibited. So, kailangan, especially sa mga girls, kailangan nila yung estrogen for bone formation and to inhibit uh, uh, bone resorption. Now, on the other hand, testosterone naman, it directly causes skeletal growth in adolescence and has continued effects on skeletal muscle growth throughout lifespan. So, mahalaga naman din yung testosterone, especially for males, ano, um, para magkaroon ng skeletal growth sa, kan sa, aming mga, sa mga lalaki. Okay, so, the testosterone converts the uh, to estrogen in adipose tissue, providing an additional source of bone preserving estrogen for aging men. Kaya hindi masyadong common, although oh, may effect then into some extent, pero hindi madaling like for example, magkaroon ng osteoporosis um sa mga lalaki compared to to women. So mamaya mapag-usapan natin what are different gerontologic changes na nangyayari as we advance in our age. Okay, so blood supply to the bone also affects bone formation. So with diminished blood supply or hyperemia, congestion, um, osteogenesis and bone density decreases or decrease. So bone necrosis occur when the bone is deprived of blood. So, bihira naman ito, ano, yung, alam naman natin, vascularize talaga yung bone. Unless meron talagang problem that inhibits um, blood supply in a certain part of the bone. So, physical activity, particularly si weight-bearing activity, kagaya na nasabi natin kanina, acts to stimulate bone formation and remodeling. So, bone subjected to continued weight-bearing tend to be thick and strong, such as yung ating um, tibia, di ba? Yung ating lower limb bones. So, they are thick and strong because of the weight-bearing activities na ginagawa natin. Okay? So, people, kagaya ng sinabi kanina, weren't able to engage in regular weight-bearing activities. Yung mga nakahiga lang, 
yung mga may physical disabilities, um, they have increased bone resorption from calcium loss and their bones become osteopenic and weak. Okay, kaya mahirap talaga yung mga naka bed rest or yung mga may limited mobility or yung may mga physical disabilities kasi talaga affected yung kanilang buong, I mean, their, their bones in their body. Okay, so note, so dito we have the difference between uh, weight-bearing activity and weight resistance exercise. So weight-bearing activity, ito yung activities which supports bone maintenance. This is any activity done while a person is on his or her feet that works person's bones and muscles against gravity. So for example, ng ating weight-bearing activity is like walking, um, playing tennis. So basta we are, you are on your feet. Okay? And then, bones and muscles against gravity. Kaya weight-bearing activity. Weight resistance exercise naman. On the other hand, it uses weights or resistance to strengthen the muscles. For example, yung mga weight resistance exercises natin include squats, push-ups, planking, among others. So, yun yung difference nila. Okay, so... Kasi baka kakalain yung weight bearing is um, nagbubuhat ng, ng weights, ano? That is not the case. Okay, so weight bearing, ito yung regular ano lang, activity na ginagawa natin that works persons, bones, and muscles against gravity. Okay, so next, ito na. So for again, bone maintenance pa rin. So, the daily intake of approximately 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams of calcium is essential to maintain an adult bone mass. So, any mga food with the high calcium? So, we have low-fat milk, okay? You have yogurt and cheese. Ano pa yung other foods na with added calcium? Orange juice, cereals, and bread. So, that's for calcium. For vitamin D, it plays a major role in calcium absorption, di ba? Kagaya na nung discuss natin kanina. So, young adults need a daily vitamin D intake of 600 IU, whereas adults aged 50 years and older require a daily intake of 800 to 1,000 IU. So, mas mataas to ensure good bone health. So, this is for vitamin D. So, ano-ano yung mga sources of vitamin D? Includes vitamin D fortified milk, cereals, egg yolks, saltwater fish, and liver. So, laging goes hand, hand in hand itong si um, calcium and vitamin D. Okay, now let's talk about bone healing. So, once tayo ay na-injured, nagkaroon ng fracture, nagkaroon ng problems in our bones, so definitely our bone has the capacity to heal, to to self-regulate and to compensate for the for the for the fractured or for the wound that occurred. So fracture healing occurs in we have the bone marrow, in the bone cortex, in the periosteum, and adjacent soft tissue. So dyan nangyayari yung bone healing sa ating parts of the bones. So now we are going to discuss the three stages of um, he, bone healing. The three sta stages of bone healing. So first, you have the stage one. This is called the inflammation phase. So, kapag ka nagkaroon ng fracture, definitely stage one mo na yan. So the body's response is similar to that after injury or elsewhere in the body. So, nagkakaroon ng bleeding sa injured tissue, sa injured bone, and local vasoconstriction occur Tapos magkakaroon ng hematoma at the site of the fracture. Cytokines are released, initiating the fracture healing processes by causing replicating cells known as fibroblasts to proliferate, which in turn causes angiogenesis to occur. Angiogenesis, that is the growth of new blood vessels. So, this phase of the healing process is typically the most painful 
for the patient. Again, stage 1's inflammation phase, definitely most painful siya kasi nga, there is an inflammation. So in this figure, ayan. So this is the inflammation phase. Itong unang tatlo, ayan. So it's like the inflammation phase. So here, ayan, nagkaroon ng hematoma, nagkaroon ng thrombosis in vessel, at yun na fractured na, na bone. Okay, so ayan, totally nabali siya. And then, pero the, the periosteum is intact. Okay, yung parang pinaka um, cover or layer niya is intact. Pero the, the bone itself is nabali. So, ayan, there is a hematoma, there is a bleeding, and then thrombosis in vessel. So, that is um, within hours to days. That is the inf inflammation phase, itong tatlo to, no? And then, inflammatory phase begins within 48 hours. So, nagkaroon ng inflammation, inflammatory cells, fibrin, and organizing the hematoma. And then, granulation tissue. So, fibroblast, there is the presence already. And then, ito yung angiogenesis, formation of new capillaries. Okay, so collectively, itong tatlo na to can be, uh, will be under the inflammation phase, stage 1. Okay, next, stage 2 is the repair phase. So the granulation tissue is initially replaced with a callus precursor called procallus. So basically, repair phase, so it'll repair niya na yung nasirang bone, yung na-fractured na bone. So, fibroblasts invade the procallus and produce a denser type of callus that is composed mostly of a fibrocartilage. So, the fibrocartilaginous callus is replaced with denser bony callus within approximately 3 to 4 weeks uh, post-injury. And then, lamellar bone then forms as the bony callus calcifies months post-injury. So, ito yung ating um, dalawang figure for... Um, the repair phase, okay, for the stage 2 or the repair phase. So, makikita nyo, ayan. So, trabecular bone, ayan, starting na siya to, to connect, di ba? So, we have the soft callus, ayan. And then, after that, magiging hard callus na siya. After one week to several months. So, it will take really a long period of time to completely heal a fractured bone. And then the last phase is the remodeling phase, several months after. So the final phase of fracture healing results in remodeling the new bone into its former structural arrangement. So necrotic bone is removed by the osteoclast. So si osteoclast naman talaga yung tag remove di ba? Resorption, um, destroying, and removing of the necrotic tissue or bone. And then the final structure of the remodeled bone resembles the original unbroken bone. So a thickened area on the surface of the bone may remain after healing. So parang may nakakapang parang bukol. So that's a thickened area, which is um, part of the um, healing process. So remodeling may take months to years depending on many factors. So ito na si remodeling, several months after. Okay, so that is the, mm, the he bone healing. Okay, the three stages of bone healing. Okay, so next, let's, so we're done with the bones. Next, we are going to discuss another major subtopic is the articular system. So, ano, ano yung parts ng articular system? First, we have joints. So, pag sinabing joints, this is the junction of two or more bones, also known as articulation. Other book, ito, kayo, ito yung definition ng joints. It is, a, a joint is a place where the ends of two bones are in proximity and move in relation to each other. Okay? So, we have three types of, uh, three kinds of joints. Sin arthrosis joints. Fibrous joints, kung tawagin din, they are immovable, such as the skull sutures. Next, amphiarthrosis joints, also known as cartilaginous joints, um, they allow uh, limited motion. Okay? So, examples are uh, vertebral joints, 
in our vertebra and the symphysis pubis. And then diarthrosis joints or synovial joints, they are freely movable joints. So, yeah, so these are the different types of joints. So, no movement at all of fibrous because they are made up of fibrous, uh, fibrous tissue, cartilaginous, only some movement, and then um, synovial joint, ayan, so full yung ating movement. Again, joints, ha? this is where two bones um, meet, two or more bones meet, or the junction of two or more bones. Or they are in proximity. They are close to one another. So that is a joint. Okay, so such as for this one. For example, this one. So this, this is the bone and another bone. So they are in proximity and they are... Um, they, um, we call this as articulation or joints, okay? So there is different, um, there are several types of diarthrosis joints or yung ating synovial joints. Alam na, yun na to, na discuss to in your um, fundamentals and um, in your MS. So I just ran through it. Ball and socket joints, you have your hinge joints, saddle joints, pivot joints, and gliding joints and then i just included here the in joints na yun, the movement examples and the illustration so i'll leave it up to you okay and then so the ends of the articulating bones of a typical movable joint are covered with smooth hyaline cartilage so we have hyaline cartilage i will show you later so a tough fibrous sheet called the joint capsule surrounds the articulating bones and then the capsule is lined with a membrane the synovium which secretes the lubricating and shock absorbing synovial fluid into the joint capsule so ito yung bumubuo sa ating joints okay so therefore yung bone surfaces yung yung bone surfaces are not in direct contact hindi talaga directly um, magkadikit in the long bones na yun. Okay? We have this different structure. The hyaline cartilage, among other cartilage. So, tingnan natin. Ito siya. Okay? So, for example, this is a bone and another bone. So, siya yung, we call this as joints, right? And the articulation. And then, you have here the articular cartilage. So, they have their own articular cartilage. So, ito yung tinatawag natin um, joint capsule. Okay? So, nakakapsule yan. Itong um, joints na yan. They are parang enclosed with a joint capsule. And then, in that joint capsule, we have the synovial membrane. And then, definitely, sa loob na yan, meron tayong synovial fluid Okay, which cushions um, the, the joints and lubricates and for a sharp uh, shock absorbing yung synovial fluid na yan. Okay, so yan yung ating um, structure for the joints. So articular, this is a cartilage, you have the joint capsule the membrane and then synovial cavity or and then synovial fluid okay so continue so cartilage now let's talk about cartilage so it is a main type of connective tissue seen throughout the body so it serves as a variety of structural and functional purposes and exists in different types Throughout our joints, bones, meron din sa spine, lungs, ears, and nose. So dito sa example natin kanina, ito yung cartilage, di ba? Articular cartilage yung sinabi natin. Pero we have different types kasi. Pero in this case, um, cartilage and that is articular. Okay, articular cartilage. So a strong and smooth substance, substance made up of chondrocytes or specialized cartilage cells um, that produce a matrix of collagen, proteoglycans, and other non-collagenous proteins. So that is a cartilage. So 
we have three types of cartilage tissue. So you have the hyaline, elastic, and the fibrous. So, ito muna, elastic tayo. Si elastic cartilage, um, this is um, more flexible than hyaline cartilage. Okay, it contains both collagen and elastic fibers. Kaya nga elastic cartilage, somehow, medyo flexible siya. It is found in your ears. So, yung nasa tenga natin na yan, that is an elastic cartilage, di ba? Pwede siyang ma-flex. Ma or, the, I mean, it's flexible. Di ba? Um, pwede mong i-pinch, pwede mong um, paglaruan. And then, you have the epiglottis and larynx. So, that is an example of elastic cartilage. Hyaline cartilage, ito naman yung most common. It contains a moderate amount of collagen fibers. And found sa ating trachea, sa bronchi, sa nose, epiphyseal plate, and articular surfaces of bones, such as yung joints kanina na pinakita natin. So, hyaline cartilage. And then, fibrous cartilage or fibrocartilage, ito mostly collagen siya, and is a tough tissue that often functions as a shock absorber. So, very limited yung movement kay fibrous cartilage natin. So, it's found in vertebral disc and also forms a protective fusion between the bones of the pelvic, girdle, knee, and shoulder. So, ito yung ating illustration for that. So, hyaline cartilage, ito yung sa joints natin kanina. And then, we also have hyaline cartilage in the lungs. And then, for elastic cartilage, it is uh, present in the pina and the epiglottis. And sa earlobes natin, ayan, here in the, sa ating tenga, it's made up of elastic um, cartilage. And then you have the fibrocartilage such as in our ver, uh, invertebral disc. Okay. So, again, nasa articular system tayo. So, we are done with um, joints. We're done with cartilage. Next, we talk about ligaments. So, ligaments are fibrous connective tissue bands that bind articulating bones together. Other definition, it connect bones to bones. For example, tibia to femur at knee joint and they have higher elastic content than tendons. So, para mas makita, ito yung ating ligaments. Ayan, yung parang bumabalot na yan sa ating bones. Okay, parang um, binabandage niya yung ating bones to bones. Ayan pa. So again, we call this as ligament. Okay, so ligaments and tendons have relatively poor blood supply, usually making tissue repair a slow process after injury. So lesser yung blood supply sa ligaments and tendons. For example, stretching or um, tearing of ligaments that occurs with a sprain may require a long peri period of time to mend. Kaya medyo matagal um, mag-subside yung pag ikaw ay na-sprain. Okay? Because ligaments or tendons is involved. So ito yung tendons pala, no? yung parang medyo um, made up of fibrous na siya. No? Para mas flexible talaga itong si ating ligaments. Okay? So, okay, so next we have, ayan, so another figure, so tendons. Tendons, remember, narrow bands of connective tissue that connect bone, uh, muscle to bone. So, your muscle will be connected to the bone through your tendons. Si ligaments, um, it joins naman bone to bone. Okay, if this bone and another bone, um, this bone and another bone here, so it will be um, in joint or um, parang bandage or band together by the ligaments. So bone to bone. Upon your roses naman, bands of, ito siya, itong nakikita niya na parang white na yan. So, bands of connective tissue rin siya that attach naman flat muscle to another muscle. So, muscle to muscle siya. Aponeurosis. 
or to several bones by the right muscle to another muscle or to several bones. That's aponeurosis. Okay, so tendons, that is um, muscle, muscles to bone, ligament, bone to bone, aponeurosis, muscle to muscle or um, several bones. Okay, so fascia it refers to layers of connective tissue with intermesh fibers that can withstand limited stretching. So we have two types, superficial and deep fascia. Superficial, it lies immediately under the skin. So after the skin, and then again, it's superficial fascia. And then it's deep fascia. Um, dense fibrous tissue that surrounds the muscle bundles, nerves, and blood vessels. In addition, um, fascia provides strength to muscle tissue. So here, ayan, makikita niyo tong deep fascia natin. Okay? So, ayan, no? This one, this one is a deep fascia. So another figure, you have the skin. After the skin, um, you have the superficial fascia. Okay, and then you have a deep fascia. And then you have the very thin na lang si epimesium and then si muscle. Okay, next is bursa or bursae. So, um, bursa are small stacks of connective tissue lined with synovial membrane and containing viscous synovial fluid. So, we have different types or different yeah, um, parts of bursa na tinatawag. We have prepatellar, olecranon, subacromial, and trochanteric. So, maliit lang siyang part, si Bursa, small sacs lang siya, um, with uh, synovial fluid din. So, pagka nagkaroon ng inflammation sa Bursa, sa kanyang sac, we call that as bursitis. It can be chronic or acute. So, ito yung figure natin. So, this one, prepatellar Bursa, ito, infrapatellar Bursa. This is normal. Pero pag namagayan, ayan, lumalaki siya. So, poor sight is in tawag. So, um, side view. So, this is the prepatellar poor sight is. Ayan, lumaki siya. And you have here the intrapatellar, infrapatellar poor sight is. So, commonly, nasa patella siya, sa olecranon, sa acromial, and trochanteric. Okay, and then let's talk about, so, na-discuss na natin si articular system in different structures such as ligaments, um, cartilage, or joints, bursa, fascia, and then na-discuss na rin natin si bones. Next part of the musculoskeletal system is definitely your skeletal muscle, the, the, the muscle system itself, muscles na tayo. So, muscles, again, are attached by tendons or aponeurosis to bones, to connective tissues or other muscles, soft tissue or skin. So, we have three types. Alam niyo na to. You have your cardiac muscle. This is for the heart. Smooth muscle for um, like the walls of the GIT, um, arteries, airways, urinary bladder, and uterus. Skeletal muscle. This is straightened, um, voluntary. At ito yung focus natin, si skeletal muscle. Okay, something that, some, uh, the muscle that we can control. Okay, so, skeletal muscle, so we have, kung, kung kay bones, you have, we have the, um, periostrum, endostrum, so ganun din si muscles. So the outer layer, you have, um, epimesium, and then you have perimesium and you have endomesium. So, ito siya. So, epimesium, perimesium, and endomesium. Epi, laging pinaka-outer. Peri, and then endo. So, ito siya. Yung pinaka-outer na yan, that is your epimesium, yung buong covering na yan. And then, this one naman is the perimesium, yung covering. Parang nakabundle siya. And then, si endomesium, ayan, individual na yun. Okay? So, this one, another view, epimesium, ito. Perimesium, ayan, bawat bilog na yan, meron siyang sariling perimesium. And then, dito, si ating endomesium. 
Okay, for the skeletal muscle contraction, I will just flash it. Okay, I will just leave it up to you for your readings, how a muscle contracts, how a muscle moves. Okay, so in shaft, I, I provided the readings here and other information. Okay, so as, um, together with the, the use of energy, the use of ATP to, for a muscle to contract or for a muscle to move. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, two types of muscle contractions. You have isometric contraction and isoconic. Pag sinabing isometric contraction, this is important. So the length of the muscles remains constant, but the force generated by the muscles is increased. Again, isometric, yung length ng muscle is constant, hindi na bago. Pero yung force na na-generate ay nag-increase. An example is that when you push against an immovable wall, di ba? Pag pinupush mo yung immovable wall, hindi naman na nagmo-move yung iyong muscle length, di ba? It remains constant, pero yung pressure or yung force na nag-generate mo is increasing. So that is an example of an isometric contraction. So repeated contractions make muscles grow larger and stronger. So that is the importance of isometric contraction. While isoponic contraction naman, characterized by shortening of the muscle with no increase in tension within the muscle. So kabalik na siya ni isometric contraction. Sa isotonic, um, there is a shortening of the muscle length and then without any increase in the force or tension sa muscle. An example is when you flex your forearm. That is isotonic. And actually, normal activities and many, many muscle movements is a combination of um, isometric and isotonic contractions. For example, during walking, yung isotonic contraction doon is the result of the shortening of the leg and isometric, contra isometric contraction causes the stiff leg to push against the floor. Okay, so here, for the muscle tone, so, the terms lang din, no? So, muscle tone or tonus is the state of readiness of the muscle to respond to a contraction stimuli. So, muscle tonus or tones produced by the maintenance of some of the muscle fibers in a contracted state. So, ito, flaccid. So, flaccid is a muscle that is limp and without tone and, is, and that is flaccid. Okay, pag wala siyang tone. Um, and then, limp siya, then that is what we call as flaccid. A muscle with greater than normal tone naman is what we call as spastic. A tonic naman kung soft and flabby ay nag-atrophy na yung muscle natin. Okay, so hypertrophy versus atrophy. So hypertrophy results from an increase in the size of individual muscle fibers without an increase in the number of muscle fibers. For example, um... If you are exercising with weights, okay, ikaw ay nag-gym, ikaw ay nagbubuhat ng mabibigat. So, nag-hypertrophy yung mga, yung muscles, yung mga nagpapalaki, di ba, ng muscle. Yung mga nag-gym, yung malaki yung biceps, for example, because of continuous um, reg exercise, yung nag-weights siya, weightlifting. So, hypertrophy yung tawag. So, the otherwise or the opposite is atrophy, the decrease in the size of a muscle. Pag hindi nagagamit yung muscle, hindi na siya, I mean, uh, immob immobilize yung tao, hindi nagagalaw yung muscle, so nag-atrophy siya. Or atrophy, the decrease in the size of a muscle, such as sa mga aging uh, population. Okay, so... Ito, mahalagang tandaan, bed rest and immobility cause loss of muscle mass and strength, sometimes referred to as sarcopenia. So remember, sarcopenia, the loss of muscle mass and strength. Now, nawala yung mass ng muscle, 
na wala rin yung strength sa dati sarcopenia. Kapag ka prolonged bed rest or um, naka-immobilize si pasyente. So, the patient can decrease the effects of immobility by isometric exercise of the muscle of the immobilized part. So, we can suggest to the patient kapag, uh, for example, nakakast siya or nakabandage, so we can suggest to perform isometric exercise. Pag sinabing isometric, di ba, hindi nagbabago yung length of the muscle pero the force is being um, increased. Okay? So, example, quadricep setting exercises, which is tightening the muscles of the thigh, and gluteal setting exercises, tightening of the muscles of the buttocks, help maintain the larger muscle groups that are important in ambulation. So, active and weight resistance exercises of uninjured parts of the body maintain muscle strength. Okay, now let's talk about gerontologic considerations. So, bone mass peaks at about 35 years of age. After that, um, magkakaroon na tayo ng gradual loss of bone. So, again, 35 years old, you will reach the peak of your bone mass. Then afterwards, gradually, um, hindi na siya madadagdagan. Okay, magkakaroon na tayo ng gradual loss of bone mass. And then there is a loss of height due to osteoporosis. This is for AJ, the, the gerontologic population. Osteoporosis is abnormal, excessive bone loss. And then kiposis, nagkakaroon sila ng kiposis because of the thin intervertebral disc inflection of the knees and hips, just like this one. So nagkakaroon ng, ito nagkakaroon ng osteoporosis and then nagkakaroon ng loss of height because of the kiposis, okay? Nagkaroon ng thin invertebral disc, inflection of the knees and hips. So, ito yung kanilang posture ng mga may kiposis and commonly found in osteoporosis or mga um, osteoporotic individual. So, numerous metabolic changes including menopausal, withdrawal of estrogen and decreased activity contribute to osteoporosis especially for women. Diba? Pag nagmenopause na sila, ayan, talagang ang laking part na in terms of the, the, the affectation in their bones. Okay? Older people, collagen structures are less able to absorb energy. And then ligaments become weak. Okay, and then muscle mass and strength also decrease with aging. Muscle mass and strength also decrease with aging. Almost 30% of muscle mass is lost by age 70. So that's, that's a big percentage, right? Aging can also bring changes in the patient's balance that's making the person unsteady and proprioception or the awareness of self in relation to the environment is altered. And then the risk for falls also increases in older adults due, uh, due in part to a loss of strength. Ito pa, so common sa kanila yung development of osteoarthritis because the articular cartil cartilage degenerates in weight-bearing areas and heals less readily. So osteoarthritis, the inflammation of the joints. Okay, so joints enlarge and range of motion decreases. Muscle mass and strength are also diminished. And then there is an actual loss in the size and number of muscle fibers due to myofibril atrophy with fibrous tissue replacement. And then I just included here for your added readings, um, age-related changes of the musculoskeletal system. Structural changes um, sa mga gerontologic population, functional changes, and different parts of the musculoskeletal system. So that concludes my discussion. I hope that you have learned something today. Thank you and God bless.